Hello, welcome to Orphan Espresso. I'm Doug. I'm Barb. And this is the OE prep system for the Coffee Lot Robot. Okay, this is a complete system that comes with an oak stand, uh, aluminum uh, back columns, stainless steel, cork is involved, we have some copper underneath here, but basically this stand holds the components of the material handling system for preparing the coffee lot robot basket. One slot is for the leveling rake, next slot for the large upper filter, next slot for the small lower filter. We have the bottom base, which as you can see contains our self-leveling screen tamper. Okay. It's very compact, but probably it shouldn't be lost on you that there's enough space basically to stow all your gear from your scale in one compact location you can put it all in mix and match scale comes off, dosing funnel goes in kind of thusly, very compact, what is it, seven inches long, something like that? Mm, seven and three quarters, seven I think. three quarters inches long and so that's the stand, that's the system now I want to show you how I use it and how the workflow is by using the system. Um, I have paired my robot with a Lido OG grinder. And the uh, nice thing about the OG is there's different ways that you can dose the coffee into the basket. Uh, you can grind directly into the robot basket. This works with a stainless steel jar and a plastic jar, but not a glass jar. Direct grind. Uh, you can use the dosing funnel, which specifically screws on. This is if you want to give some more material shaking and distribution and invert coffee in the basket. Or you can use the funnel directly as a pour from this jar or any other jar or any other grinder that you use that has a dosing cup or however. But I'm going to demonstrate direct grinding into the potty filter basket just because I can. Okay? So the first thing you want to make sure is that if you're using this bottom paper, and there's a lot of talk about the benefits of having a paper in the bottom of your basket. So basically, just throw in my paper. Now, since I'm going to be inverting this, since I'm going to be shaking oh, it around, still. <laughs> since I'm going to be shaking it around, I want to stick it down with a little water to make sure that I don't get any coffee under it, which would kind of defeat the purpose. So I stick that down with some water, blot it off a little bit. Now this is their, the the direct method. Okay, I have 18 grams of beans, and this is going to take about a minute, so I'll just kick back and grind my beans. The nice thing about using the basket is that you have like a third layer of sound insulation in there. This is very quiet, and since it's quiet, or quieter, you kind of have the feeling that, geez, it's going so fast. Well, a minute goes by pretty quickly. And you notice with the OG and our other grinders, I'm doing what we call base-supported grinding. That's the way we design the grinder, because with the base-supported, you get this vortexing action with the beans, and you actually get a very nice, even feed into the burrs. If you don't use base supported method, whether it's on a counter or on your hip or sitting down, it, it takes longer because the feed is less efficient. But by this method, method you just crank it out. I think I timed it a minute and 15 seconds or something like that. Okay, I'm pretty much there. Now, 
I have my coffee in my portafilter basket right now. What I don't want to do is I don't want to introduce any kind of variables that are, are, are going to be hard to correct. So I don't want to thump it down. Because if I thump it down, I'm going to compact the coffee into one corner or the other. And I don't want to have to correct that. What I use is a hockey puck. All I want to do is knock the coffee off the burr. That's all. Okay. Nice and clean. Nice and clean. Now, my coffee's in my filter basket. I use the frame as my workstation. So, you want to see what I have here, Bart? Can you see uh, it? No, it's pretty dark in there. Pretty dark in there? But oh, it's not so dark when you're in a sunbeam. Right here. Does that help? Yeah, a little bit. See what I've got? Coffee's kind of off to one side. Okay, so my workflow is thusly. First I rake. Usually I do 10, 15, 20. I, I've done this so much I don't think about it. Okay, that evens out the surface. Okay, that goes back in. Now, I take my press. Now I just flatten it out. Okay. I'm not doing very much to disturb the, the surface of the coffee. It's all fallen out of the burr, snowed down in there, nice and fluffy. I didn't thump it, I didn't do anything strange to it. So now I've got a nice flat surface that I'm ready to tamp. But firstly, I'll put in my top paper. Can you get a shot of this, Barb? Okay. And it just floats down. It fits so nicely. I still use the screen. Let me turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'll go here. It's very nicely. Press with my finger. I've been lately wanting to see about a thousand grams. That's it. I'm done. I'm ready to add my water and to pull the shot. Okay. If you use the other methods of, of dosing and inverting, I'm just saying that the, the, this, this system is to give a consistent preparation. It gives a flat groomed surface and then it allows you to tamp on top of the screen and to tamp the same way every time. So this is the material handling's part. The rest of it, there's some variables with temperature and pressure and how you pull your shot and what your goal is. Do you want a longo? Do you want a ristretto? Whatever. These are decisions for you to make as barista. But this part solves a lot of issues for me. This is our system. ROE, portafilter dosing system for the coffee lot robot.